Good evening and welcome, VV Nation, to our next installment in the VectorVest 7 Navigation Series. My name is Glenn, Senior Stock Market Strategist for VectorVest. I'm having a ball re-recording the Navigation Series. I keep getting emails all the time talking about how this series has helped people better understand the VectorVest system and how to best use it. So we're gonna keep on going until we get through all of the tabs in the VectorVest system so that you'll have a better understanding and idea of how to use the system to, the, to its fullest capacity, to its fullest level. And at the end, in case you're brand new, I'm going to show you where to find a watch list or a playlist of all of the videos that you can hone in on, especially if there's a part of the VectorVest system you want more help on, I'm gonna show you how to get to that. So once again, the navigation series, uh, and again, a lot of people are loving it and hope you are as well. Let's get into today's session. It's going to be stock industry sector graphs, all right? Stock graphs, industry graphs, sector graphs. Uh, so we're in the graphs tab in the software. We've talked about the homepage, the timing, the viewers, and we're just going through each each and every tab in the software so that you as a subscriber to our channel or brand new eyes to the channel get a better understanding of what we're all about and what makes us different. So today's agenda we're going to cover what are the different types of graphs that we have available and before everybody starts asking questions about VWAP because that's a big thing a lot of people are looking for the volume weighted averaged graph thingy we don't have it but we've got a lot of other things that will help you to make decisions and that's probably going to be in another video when I get into technical analysis how important is a graph you know why because a picture is worth a thousand words by a graph you can get a better understanding no matter what anybody's telling you about a stock you can get a better understanding of what the stock is really doing is it really moving up from the bottom left to the top right is it choppy and volatile if it is too volatile you can tell by the graph and you can make a decision on whether or not you want to be in that stock the next thing what is the standard graph as a brand new subscriber there's a standard graph that you open up for everybody to start to understand what's going on, but you can make a lot of different changes to that graph, save that graph. There's a lot of flexibility in our graphing package. What indicators can you graph? Well, that's a cool thing because we have proprietary indicators that you can use. You can graph those proprietary indicators. Well, you can't do that anyplace else because these indicators are only for vector vest. And why is looking at an industry and sector graph so important? I'm gonna teach you about the drill down method to hone in on some of the best stocks that you can find. And we're gonna get right into the software right now. Now, I started off with a watch list of stocks. These are right now at the time of recording this video. Uh, there's a lot of stocks that are hot and heavy in the market. I probably need to put in Microsoft and Apple as well. Uh, APL. Why? Because from a um, uh, the level of market cap, those stocks have to be in here. They have to be in here. But I'm looking at stocks like NVIDIA, the hottest stock on the planet. AMD, in that AI space. Palantir, one of my favorite stocks. I'm going to show you why by way of a graph. Apple, of course, one of the top three by market cap. Microsoft, Uranium, a hot play right now. Is it still worth it? Arm in the AI space. So notice that a lot of these stocks are AI related because AI is hot, 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 hot. Gold is on the rise, but is it sustainable? A graph will help me to make sure that it is or not. And of course, oil back and forth. I'm going to show you very something very interesting about oil for any of those of you who are interested in the oil play. So can a, can a graph actually help me to make money? If I'm looking at price action, that's the most important thing to me when I'm investing in a stock. Can a graph save me money? Absolutely, because a lot of you say, well, I own this stock. Should I get out of it? What should I be? Should I be cutting ties? Should I be taking profits? Should I get out of it? And a graph can save you money because there's a lot of telltale signs to know when it's time to get out of a stock as well. So you can tell if it's a good time to be in a stock, when it's the best time to enter, if it's time to still be in it, and of course, when to get out of it. And a graph will do that. You know what I've heard recently? Trade the chart 
not your heart. And I think a lot of you get caught up in there in the stocks that you really like and you trade with your heart and let and, and leave the chart and you don't look at the chart. You oh no, it's going to go up. And when it doesn't go up, you're beating yourselves up because you should have listened to the chart. Now, of course, I'm not going to see this chat, but how many of you follow your heart and lose money? How many of you follow the chart and save money? All right, and that's very important. Put it in the chat, let me know. Because again, follow the chart, not your heart. So I'm gonna simply highlight all of these stocks that I have. I'm gonna hold down the left, uh, left click on the top one, hold down the shift key, left click on the bottom one. Notice that they all get highlighted. I'm going to right click in the highlighted area and I'm going to go down to view stock graph. And I'm gonna start off with the typical graph that everyone who's brand new to the VectorVest system will have. And this is called, the current is the VectorVest symbol. We're looking at the VectorVest symbol graph. As a matter of fact, for those of you who are subscribers to the software, now when you click on a graph, it shows you what graph you're in. For those of you who used to be subscribers and are not anymore, this is a new function that we have. So now we can see what graphs we're in. So what are you looking for? Typically, when you're looking to get into a stock or hold on to a stock, you want to see a graph moving from the bottom left to the top right. And yes, right now I'm looking at a one year graph. Why? Because it's gonna give me some insight as to what the stock has been doing and if it's still doing what I want it to do, which is go up in price. We're gonna come back and look at some of these things. Bottom left, top right, it ticks off the first uh, mark, lets me know it is moving up. On this graph, I also have earnings per share. Earnings is the engine that drives the stock's price higher. They are growing in their earnings. Our earnings is one year forecasted out, which plays an important role as well because we're saying by this time next year, the earnings per share should be at $3.58. That's a good thing going forward. We also have RT to let us know if the stock is in an uptrend or not. And remember I told you that a graph can let you know when it's time to get out of it. Simple, when RT goes below one, that's probably a good time to take half or all off the table, depending on what's going on in the market at this time. So we can look at an opportunity to be in the stock. We can also look at an opportunity of when they start to get out of a stock. Now, a couple of other things. Every stock in our database gets a buy, hold, or sell recommendation every single day. We can watch a stock move from a buy to a hold to a sell, back to a buy, back to a hold, back to a sell. A lot of choppiness going on right there. Maybe you start to take off some profits and you wait for a better opportunity to get in when the stock becomes either a hold or a buy. Let's go to the next stock. Looking at AMD, a hot stock in a hot space, but again, trade the chart not your heart. Is it doing what I want it to do right now? And you can see a lot of news out there telling you, AMD is hot, you gotta buy. Over the next five years, it's gonna blah, 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 blah. Is it doing what I want it to do right now? You'll see a couple of drawing features that I have on here. We'll talk about that in a second as well. But I've got trend lines, connecting the highs, connecting the lows, consolidation, breaking down. As much as you may like AMD, the chart says that right now, you may not wanna be in it. but. Long term, the earnings per share is rising. That's a great thing. Price action is telling me another story. Let's move to Palantir. Bottom left, top right, moving up off the one year highs, looking at the stop price. When a stock's price drops below the stop price, it automatically gets a sell recommendation. I can watch and see if the price is trending towards the stop as another way of letting me know, maybe I should take some off the table. Nice open day on today. Love the earnings per share. I do like bottom left, top right. Next one. Looking at Apple, a little bit more choppy. Now, if I like the stock long term, if I can't deal with the volatility on this stock, I now say maybe I move on to another stock. But I've got a trend line. This trend line is holding well. Right now, pulling off the high out of a level of being in a channel. And now, we're keeping our eyes on what's going on with the stock. The stock's price does have an uptrend right now, coming a couple of days off of the high, but watch what it's doing right now. It's still above the stop, earnings per share is going, but I can use these trend lines as a means to help me to, to manage the trade. All right, let's go to the next stock, Microsoft. Hmm, 
Bottom left, top right, little rocky road. Trend line broke. Trend line still intact. And earnings per share, again, I love the earnings per share on it, but is it doing what I want it to do right now? Let's go draw a freehand line connecting the tops. Woo-wee. That's a downtrend, and it's showing me more price action to the downside right now. Let's go to the next one. URA, uranium. A lot of clean energy uh, talk in regards to the AI space, but notice that the stock is bottom left, top right, but a lot of volatility. Again, if the volatility doesn't fit your type of investing, you move on to another stock. But for those of you who are trading, you got to know you got to get in at the right time and get out at the right time. And the graph will help me to do that. Let's go to the next graph. Arm, whew, trend line broke down below. Still the hold recommendation. Love the earnings per share. Stock is losing momentum with RT falling. Hmm. Again, you want to trade price action, trade the chart, not your heart. I love that. Wow, gold, bottom left, top right, not a lot of volatility. A couple of days off the one-year high. Whew, that's a good-looking play. And the last stock is oil, USO. Man, what I wanted to tell you about oil with all of the tensions that's going on across the world with wars and things like that and oil, very volatile. If again, this is not your bag, you don't trade oil. But for those of you who are trading, you have definite opportunities to get in and you have definite opportunities to get out. All right, so that's looking at the graphing package by just looking at a graph and making a decision. Trading the chart, not your heart. RT is important. Uh, when looking at a graph, that's why it's on the standard graph to give you opportunities to get in and get out at the best possible time. How does a moving average ha uh, help me? I'm going to go to the next graph, and I'm going to show you how to put a moving average on a vector vest graph. Simply go to the price box, right-click on the price box, go down to add moving average. Let me move over a little bit. Add moving average. You can put on a simple exponential or weighted. I'm going to go to exponential and I'm going to click on the number 10. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to right click on the price box, go to add moving average, go to exponential, click on the number 10. I like using exponential moving averages. Now, I'm going to put on a three and an eight exponential moving average by now using the up and down arrows. I'm going to hit the arrow to the downside and I'm going to go to the number three. And then I'm going to hit the arrow to the downside on the other 10 and go to the number eight. Now that I've got the three and the eight exponential moving averages there, I simply click the boxes and they show up. Now, you can barely see them. I'm going to show you part of the graphing uh, capabilities as well. I'm going to right click on the EMA price three, change the style, and it's going to bring up, again, flexibility. I'm going to change the line color to green. And I'm going to make the marker darker. Look at that. Now I can see it better. I'm going to leave everything else alone. I'm going to go to the eight, right click on it, change the style. I want that to stay red. I just want to be able to see it. Click the bar. Look at that. Now I can clearly see the three crossing above the eight to get me in, the three crossing below the eight to get me out. I like the three green because it's bullish. I like the eight red because once the green goes below the red, that is a bearish crossover. Now, you saw that by changing with the arrows, I can make this whatever I want. If I want to make this a, a 10 and a 20, let's go hit the, uh, hit the up arrow, go to 10. Let's go hit the up arrow on the eight and take it to 20. Look at that, now I've got a 10 and 20. I can make this whatever I want. And not only does it have to be exponential, it can be weighted, it can be simple, whatever you want to help you to make the right decisions. Look at this, the 10 and the 20 work well on AMD if you're longer term. The crossover, take that profit. Play it to the downside. Crossover, get back in back and forth. No matter what moving averages you're looking for, you can use them in the graphing package. What layouts are available? You'll notice that here where we have graph, graph layouts, we have vector vest simple, vector vest layout, star search, you'll see us use that a lot on the channel. Pro Trader Timing Dude, that's for market timing. The near perfect indicator, which came out of Canada and Stan Heller. Uh, Midas Touch, which we use for getting in and out of gold, but can be used for getting in and out of stocks as well. The GLB 
MBRT kicker, which is for market timing, the enhanced pro trader timing, also used for market timing, Colt 45, part of the Midas Touch. And we've talked about a lot of these different graph layouts over time in and on the channel. So vector vest simple, simple layout, stocks price movement along with the stock price RT and earnings per share. I think that is a brand new person opening up the vector vest software. This is probably the best graph you can start using. Um, how does the stop price help me? Again, when the stock's price, which is the candlesticks, moves below the stop price, now, what is the stop price? The stop price is a 13 week moving average adjusted for the fundamentals of the stock. So if the fundamentals are good, we're going to raise, and going to lower the stop price to keep you in it longer. If the fundamentals are not so good, we're going to raise the stop price to get you out of the stock faster. So um, how do I customize a period on the graph? Down below, you'll see, and I'm going to take my picture off for a second. There we go. Down below, you have several different layouts that you can use for your time period. I can look at a one-day graph. That'll load up. That's a one-day graph, two-day graph, three-day graph, one-month graph, three-month graph, six-month graph, one-year graph of which we're looking at. And we can go all the way up to 10 years. So we can adjust our time periods up in here. Uh, I can throw earnings onto the graph to show me my earnings dates. I can show if the stock pays dividends and when it does by clicking on dividends down below. Um, there's a lot of flexibility. If the stock had splits, I can put on splits. Uh, I can look at the high and the low, see, watch the H and the L go away or show up. I can clearly see where the stock's high and low are on the graph. And I am looking at the current price right here. Um, what drawing features are available? Right here where it says freehand lines, if I click the down arrow, there's a lot of different drawings. If you like Fibonacci's, we have retracements, fans, arcs, time zones, and we have GAN fans as well. If I want to get rid of all of the drawings on a graph, I can click on clear all drawings. All right, so there's a lot of functionality, vertical line, horizontal line, freehand line, extended line. I can actually put notes on my graph, and once I do that, they will stay forever and ever and ever. Uh, now, I'm going to show you something else, something that I've been using in uh, the live streams as well. I can look at graphs. You know, I've got more than one graph. I can look at graphs in several different ways. One graph at a time, two graphs side by side, two graphs over each other, or four graphs all on one screen. If I click on that, it's going to take the top four stocks in my list and put them onto a graph. All right, and I can look at all four graphs at the same time to help me in regards to what I'm doing with a stock, which stock looks better than the other. I'm gonna put that back on to one. I'm just showing you again a lot of the graphing capabilities on here. What indicators can I put on a graph? Again, I showed you I can put moving averages on a graph. Um, I can put more than one moving average. If I want a third moving average, go to price, right click, go to add moving average, go again to exponential. This time we're going to put on a 20. So now I'm going to take these back down to three and eight. Three and eight. And I'm going to leave on the 20. Now, I like this setup as well because I can use the 3 and the 8 for getting me in and out. But I can use the 20 for the purposes of showing me trend. Let's change the style. Let's make it, uh, change it to a different color like purple. I like purple. And I want to change the line and make it darker. And there it is. So now I can see the 3, the 8, and the 20 depending on which. So I can put as many moving averages on here as I want. How do I add a different parameter to the graph? Let's say I want to add volume. Let's go to add parameter right here. Let's go down to price volume. And now let's go over to volume. Now all I need to do is simply check the box. Boom, volume is now up there. Why is volume important when I'm looking at a graph? Volume shows conviction. When I'm watching a stock's price go up, I want to see rising conviction. That gives me the sense that not only is the stock going up in price, but a lot of people are driving it higher, giving me a higher probability that the stock's price should continue to rise. Now, when I see a stock's price falling and RT, uh, sorry, volume falling, people are losing momentum, losing um, 
interest in it, and when it happens, the stock's price starts to move down, all right? Uh, what technical analysis parameters are available? Let's go over to add parameter. Now let's go to technical analysis. There's several different things that I can add. ADX for direction, average true range to see where the stock's price normally changes, Bollinger Bands, the trended price oscillator, envelopes, MACD, momentum, on balance volume, RSI to see if a stock is overbought, uh, overbought or oversold, stochastics for the same thing, support and resistance. I want to show you support and resistance because VectorVest will draw your lines for you. Watch this. Boom. Now it'll let you know where the stock's uh, support and resistance are throughout the graph layout you're looking at. It'll draw it for you. Not a lot of people know you can do that, especially if you like support and resistance, retracing from resistance, breaking through support, now using this level of support as a line. We'll see what happens with that. All right, let's say I like this and I wanna save this graph layout. Simply go over to save, modify, and I'm going to create, add a new layout, and I'm going to call this NS for navigational series, NS6, because this is the sixth uh, lesson in the navigational series. And I'm going to click on OK, close, and watch this. Let's say we go back to VectorVest Simple or VectorVest Layout. Scroll down. Look at that there, NS6. All right, which is a variation of the simple graph looking at my moving averages that I like, looking at volume, and now looking at support and resistance. Again, folks, our graphing package has a lot of flexibility to accommodate what you want to do. How important is support and resistance? I can tell you, I can help you to let you know when it's a good time to start taking profits or taking more off the table to protect yourself as the stock's price starts to fall. But support and resistance technical analysis is a great way to help to navigate through what's going on with your stock so that you never have to be a bag holder. That's a candlestick formation right there called a shooting star. With, four, uh, with a follow through and look at the moving averages uh, uh, coming through and confidently letting you know what's going on. All right, now I'm gonna close out of this and I'm going to now stay in viewers, but I'm going to go to the industry viewer. I'm gonna actually, let's go start with the sector viewer and I'm gonna show you a drill down method because now we're gonna start looking at sector in industry graphs, let me make this a little bigger for you. This is another thing. If the type is too small for you, let's go to layout. And I'm going to change the font right here. Click on there and I'm going to make it to 18. Click on OK. Watch this. Voila. It's going to be much easier for you to see what's going on. Notice that all of these are not segment it out i'm going to right click again and go down to auto fit all columns boom now we're looking at the top in uh, top sectors in the software watch this let's go to insurance It's at the top of the list right let's right click let's view the sector graph is this a sector that i want to be in let's go back over to one year and let's go back to the vector vest uh, layout I can clearly see on a one year, it has been moving up. Whoa, another shooting star pattern. we got a little bit of a cloud cover, dark cloud cover. The industry is starting to lose some momentum. Look at that. Look at that. The stocks, the industry is moving. So now, even though it may still be a hot industry, it's starting to lose some momentum. Let's do this. Let's go highlight a few of these. Shift, let's just go down, right click view the sector graph, see if there's any sectors that I like right now. And the purpose of looking at a graph is so important. Bank falling. Computer, a little bit of a rebound. I wanna see if there's any one that's really running. Interesting, right? Now this is interesting, oof. Mining, look how volatile the, in, uh, the sector is. Whew. All right, which means the stocks in the sector or the industries in the sector will be looking the same way. Market. Interesting, in the current market's condition, there's not a lot of sectors that are on the rise. Ooh, but REIT, look at this. 
three days in a row rising, even though it's off of the high. I like that RT did not go below one. Let's go look at REIT. So I like the sector. I'm looking at all of those sectors. It's the only one that catches my attention right now. Let's double click on REIT. Now we're drilling down into what industries are pushing REITs higher. This is called birds of a feather flock together. REIT equity, REIT mortgage. Well, let's go look at those two industries now after we've looked at the sector, put this on a one year. How about REIT equity coming off the high as well, but moving up for three days in a row? Hmm, not as much as REIT mortgage. REIT mortgage doesn't look as strong as REIT equity. Hmm. All right. So we found a sector that looks okay, not perfect. We found an industry in that sector that looks okay, not perfect. So let's go into REIT equity. We'll double click on REIT equity. Boom. Now let's go see what stocks are in that industry. And there's 137. That's a lot of stocks. So what would I normally do right here? I'd sort this by CI. Why? Because CI is the comfort index, the stock's ability, or in this case, the industry's ability to withstand long or lengthy price declines. Uh -huh. So as I look at this, these are the stocks that are going to be less volatile within that industry, within that sector. Let's graph them all real quick. Put these onto the vector vest, one year graph, vector vest simple. Wow, now I'm getting a little bit better. SL Green, look at this bottom left, top right, sorted by uh, CI, a lot less volatile stock. Let's go to the next one. Woo, AHR. Look at this little rebound here. Uh, RT is on the rise, stock is above the stop. We're looking at one year graph. Remember, woo, ACR. I like the move, but sideways. Let's go to the next one. Nice move on HIW, bottom left, top right, RT. Let's go throw some volume on here. Actually, let's do this. Let's go to our graph layout. Let's go to our new layout that we created with the 3 to 8 to 20 support resistance. Look at this rising volume with that stock. That's why volume is so important. Look at that. PDM, hmm, I don't like the earnings so much, but I do like the price activity. Bottom left, top right, the three and the eight are still holding and the 20 is still showing me trend. RT is above one, earnings doesn't look all that great. Whew. AKR, look at that. Now the beautiful thing about what I'm taking you through as a graphing feature, looking at the top down approach from sector graph to industry graph to stock graph, you may come up on stocks that you didn't even know about. How cool is that, that are making money? If you think that that's cool, type that in the chat. If you think that that is cool, type that in the chat. Folks, we track over 9,000 stocks. How cool is it to hone in on some of the best stocks by using the top-down approach when looking at these graphs. That is what makes us different from everybody else when it comes down to graphs. So yeah, we don't have VWAP. We may not have this, that, or the other thing, but when we can go through and take the top, wow, look at that well, bottom left, top right, right off the highs, three and eight holding, trend is still there, rising earnings per share, RT starting to rise. Folks, you're going to find a plethora of stocks to keep your eyes on. VNO, v, look at that graph. Look at that RT. Earnings is okay. I like the volume. And eh, volume could be better. But this is the beauty. No, you don't want that. I, I would do anything for stocks. But I won't do that. All right. So as we start to wrap up this session, this is the beautiful thing about our graphing packages, looking at stocks, looking at sectors, looking at industries and how important a graph really is when you're making a decision on what to do with a stock and the flexibility behind our graphing package to introduce you to new positions that you may not have ever heard of that are doing well out of over 9,000 stocks, folks, is, is immeasurable, number one, and it is extremely valuable to make you a better investor. That's this portion of the series, folks. Uh, the first section of graphs, we're gonna have another video on graphs to cover that up, to, to finish that up. But folks, 
This is super valuable to help you to become better investors without having to listen to newsletters, without having to watch TV, without listening to your doctor and your dentist and your gynecologist telling you about what stocks to get into. Folks, this is simple stuff. It's easy stuff. Investing ain't easy, but we're making it easier. We do the work so you don't have to. With that being said, folks, stay tuned for all of this. Oh, one last thing is I mentioned, if you go to our YouTube page, if you go to our VectorVest YouTube page and go down the playlists right here, I go to playlists. Here's the navigation series. I'm going to click on it. Uh, here's our navigation series, starting with uh, looking at the home page all the way through. Hold on. Let's I take that off. Let me take that off. Um, click on it. I want to look at. There it is. No, that's. Oh, there they are. All right, let me pause that. There they are. Uh, the home page, market timing. Let me take my picture off one more time. All right. Home page, market timing, viewers part one, the stock viewer, viewers part two, viewers part three. And now we're on to the next video, which is the graphing part one. Folks, I love bringing this series to you. You're getting ready to get another video following this one to finish up the graphing side. If this has been very helpful to you, type the word helpful. I enjoy this. People love this. This is a new updated version of the series. So this video is over. And until the next time, see ya.